Hi everyone, and welcome back to the 50th video for the Old Testament survey course. In this section, we'll examine the book of Zechariah. Now be careful not to confuse this with the book of Zephaniah because of the similarity of their names. Obviously, they're different books from different occasions and with different messages. And we'll start by mentioning some background issues. The author is Zechariah, the grandson of Iddo, which makes him a Levite and probably a priest. And the date is around the same time as Haggai, that is, the returned exiles in the time after the initial excitement of the return had worn off and discouragement had started to set in. And Zechariah, like Haggai, often speaks to that discouragement in order to motivate them. Zechariah speaks of rebuilding the temple, but actually, in contrast to Haggai, Zechariah mostly looks past the immediate situation of the temple, and he focuses on the greater glory that is to come in Judah's future. And much of Zechariah is in the form of symbolic visions. It's part prophecy and part apocalyptic literature, similar to David, excuse me, similar to Daniel and Revelation. Now let's look at the organization of Zechariah. The outline has three main sections after a brief introduction. The first six verses are an introduction that calls God's people to return to him. And then is a series of eight visions, most interpreted by a heavenly messenger. And each has a message of challenge and comfort that speaks to the issues of the returned exiles. And then is an interlude with three subsections. The first highlights the chief priest Joshua as God's instrument and calls him the branch. And the second calls God's people to administer true justice and not just the ritual of fasting. And the third promises that God will return and bless Jerusalem. And then the third and final section is made up of two prophetic oracles that speak of the coming of God's kingdom. And it focuses on the coming Davidic king, who is also known as the Messiah. Now let's survey the content by looking at a few key verses. Verses chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. So he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. What are you, O mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone to shouts of, God bless it, God bless it. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Now, this passage is encouragement to Zerubbabel that God was with him and that he would be successful in rebuilding the temple and that it would be God's work by God's power and God's spirit that ultimately uh, accomplishes this task. Next is chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. It says, Tell him this is what the Lord Almighty says. Here is the man whose name is the branch. And he will branch out from his place and build the temple of the Lord. It is he who will build the temple of the Lord, and he will be clothed with majesty and will sit and rule on his throne. And he will be a priest on his throne, and there will be harmony between the two. Now, this passage is similar encouragement to the high priest Joshua. And Joshua is called by the nickname the branch. But the, the term the branch is similar to the term the servant in Isaiah. And the term branch is likely a reference to passages from Isaiah and Jeremiah, who both prophesy that a branch from David's house will come back from seemingly disappearance to rule and rescue. And notice in this passage, it is foretold that the priestly and kingly roles would be combined in one man. And there's no indication in history that that happened to Joshua, the high priest. But in the New Testament, there's someone else called the branch of David, who does fully fulfill the priestly and the kingly roles together in one person, as well as others. And Joshua, it says, will be instrumental in the rebuilding of the temple. Next is chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. And it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem, see, your king comes to you, 
righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Now, this is clearly a prediction that a king from David's line will come to Jerusalem. And he'll not come as a warrior, but with humility, and he will bring peace and salvation. Now, if you've read the New Testament, you probably recognize that this passage was applied to Jesus as he rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And the New Testament authors intend us to apply the surrounding passages in Zechariah to Jesus as well. And then it's chapter 12, verse 10. And it says, And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. Now, this is another prediction of how God will bless his people. It will be an outpouring of grace, but it will also bring about mourning for sin. Specifically, it says they will mourn over the one they have pierced. And then finally is chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. And this says, On that day, a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. On that day, I will banish the names of the idols from the land, and they will be remembered no more, declares the Lord Almighty. I will remove both the prophets and the spirit of impurity from the land. Now, this passage is another prediction of blessing. Zechariah says that a fountain will be opened for the cleansing of sin that comes in the midst of David's descendants. And God will remove the idols from his people's midst. Now, these are the key verses of Zechariah. So now let's look at the theological themes of this book. Now, the first theme is that God will return to his people. He will set up and exercise his kingship, his kingdom, and he will bring blessing to Jerusalem and Judah. And then the next theme is the way that he will set up his kingship, and it's the theme of Davidic king, also called Messiah, or sometimes conflated with the idea of the branch. God will inaugurate his kingdom through a Davidic king, and the king will be humble but will accomplish all that God has planned to restore his people and forgive their sins. And in the New Testament, obviously, we see the fulfillment of these prophecies in Jesus. So now let's review. First, we'll, renew, we'll review the organization of Zechariah, and it is Intro, Visions, Interlude, and Messiah. And let's review the themes of Zechariah. They are, God will return, and Messiah is coming. Okay, that's our survey of Zechariah. There's a lot more to this book that we could look at, and there's a lot of great material that we couldn't look at in this brief summary. Feel free to dive in more deeply as you have time. But in the next section, we'll finish up the Minor Prophets by studying the book of Malachi. And I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching.